So, you knew this day would come. You knew this day would come. In fact, hundreds of you people asked me to do this. I know, homies. We checked out the odd ones out the other day. It was amazing. It was a blast. We had so much fun. But you said, Robert, 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 you can't just stop at James. You have to check out Jaden. And we ain't talking Smith, baby. Jaden animations. I don't want to make too many assumptions here because, again, I have never watched this person in my life. But I am guessing these are stories similar to the odd ones out, but instead of James, is Jaden. And people love Jaden. Almost 12 million subs! Almost 100 million views! These are also legendary animations that, in my opinion, are essential viewing. We have to watch these. What kind of YouTube animation people are we if we haven't seen these? So we are looking at some of her classics today. There's injuries and being sick, which do we really want to start with being sick? Or do we start with things that happened while I grew up. Very strange grammatical choice on that title, but I can't, I can't complain. All right, guys, I honestly don't know which one we're gonna do, so we gotta flip a coin. Oh, sick! Okay, okay, wait, 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 I have to decide which one it is. Okay, we're flipping a coin. Injuries and being sick is heads, things that happened while I grew up, tails. All right, let's flip, flip it, brother. Flip, flip, flip. Tails. Okay, we don't have to talk about being sick just yet. We're getting to that one after this. But we are going to check out things that happened while I grew up. This is probably a good one to meet Jaden, you know? Jaden, I'm trying to meet you for the first time. When I was living on my own for the first time, I had to go to the store and get milk and paper towels. And that was the first time I was like, wow. I am such a freaking adult. I really appreciate the childhood my parents were able to give me. I'm really privileged to have grown up in a functional house where my parents didn't want me to die. I made a parent <laughs> stories video a little over a year ago and I rewatched it to make sure I didn't repeat any topics. And all I'm gonna say is those stories and animation ain't nothing compared to this. Are not worth 10 million views. <laughs> that video I don't, I don't like it. I don't like that video. My oh, parents- humble, you're humble. We appreciate that. Man, I wish I could say, oh yeah, that video I did, it got 10 million views. I don't even like it. I don't even like it. I could do so much better. Guys, don't give that one 10 million views. Give this one 10. Oh, the dream, the dream. What's a fella gotta do to get 10 milli on a video? Probably have to make a song. That's probably what I have to do. I have to make like a legendary meme song. I think that's how I get 10 million views. That's my best shot. My parents were really, really big on manners and being polite. We've got some Asian blood in us, so we can't bring dishonor to our family. All right, I am not legally allowed to laugh at that. We do all the typical things like call adults Mr. and Mrs., ask to be excused from dinner, make yeah. sure to thank everyone for yeah. everything ever, bow to our superiors. When my mom had new people- Okay, same, same. I'm sorry to pause it again really quick, but yeah, I was taught to say thank you for like everything. And I had to ask to be excused from the dinner table. I met someone recently who wasn't taught to say thank you and it drives me nuts, bro, nuts. When my mom had new people come over to the house, she would make me introduce myself and shake their hand. And then when no one was looking, she'd pull me aside to a different room and quiz me. What, what color are their eyes? What color is my underwear? That was my what? mom's training no course way. to get me to be good at eye contact because I guess I used to be stupid and not look at people when they talked. But I remember that kind of backfired because I'd be so focused on memorizing their eyes that I oh, wouldn't pay attention no. to what they were saying. Oh. Okay, that's another level. That's another level. Quizzing on the eye color. So, okay, knowing that it's just the eye color makes it a little bit worse. I thought it was gonna be like, what, what color is their underwear? underwear? <laughs> you know, just like a random thing every time. That's not as bad, but still pretty neurotic. Hi, Jaden. How are you? That's Bro. All right, loser, I've got a quiz to take. Now that I've got 20 years of ace eye quizzes under my belt, I'm an eye contact wizard. I graduated top of my class in eye contact. I've got eye contact master's degrees. Well, every once in a while, some people make me Challenge nervous accepted. and I get shy. But other than that, I'm an eye contact powerhouse. I realized more recently that I think sometimes I go overboard and just end up staring at people by accident. And it's very weird. And I'm sorry at everyone. My mom would also- It's not that bad though. Like, I guess it 
it's kind of better than no eye contact. It depends. It depends how engaged you are. If you're staring at someone and you aren't taking in what they're saying and you are just blankly there, but you're staring at them, that is bad. But if you are focused and engaged in a conversation and you're making eye contact while having an intelligent conversation, that's not nearly as bad. That's way better. That is respectable. There's a very fine line with the eye contact from excellent confidence and freak of nature. You got to tread that line. You want to stay on this side of that line, just so you know. My mom would also be really strict on me saying pardon all the time instead of what. Like she would say something I didn't hear and I'd go, what? And she'd stick oh, her head around with same. pardon. I wouldn't same. be a bimbo and be all, what? It's not like I was being a rude moron. One time my friend told me, Jaden, I think you're the only person I know that says pardon. And like, that's all fine and dandy. I could respect my mom's request to use an underused polite word. I was told to say pardon too. I, I say sorry now, I don't say pardon. If, if I don't hear someone, I say sorry and they repeat it. I But pardon was what I was taught to use, 100%. Heck yeah, my, I'm starting to realize my parents were more strict than I thought. But I can't because she's even worse. This is what Ooh. she does. Mom, did you put my book somewhere? What? Huh? Objectively what? speaking, a huh? uh, what is exponentially better than a huh? huh? I started mocking her whenever she did it and then she gradually stopped bothering me about saying pardon. Also, Got I realized him. I never told you that I had a lisp as a kid. My parents Same. meme on me about it all the time and a running joke in the family came from when I used to be babysat by my mom's friend who's Italian, which means she'd tuck her like this and have her house full of a spaghetti. And oh, mamma mia, I'm only half joking. She's very Italian. Yahoo! She would make pasta for me all the time. And whenever she would ask what I wanted for lunch, I- Pasta, pasta. I would pathetically go, pasta with no sauce. Oh, pasta. I wanted pasta with no sauce. <laughs> Yo, Jaden, are you me, bro? Are you me? I had a lisp too. I still have a weird voice to this day. And like, there are things in my voice that I do kind of wish I could train out, but it is miles better than when I was a child. When I was a child, I had a lisp and people who I would just meet for the first time would make fun of me and it was bad and it wasn't done. But now, hey, that same voice you made fun of, you jerks, I can do so much with it now. I can do so much with this voice now. And what are y'all doing? One trick pony? One voice McGee? Huh? That's what I thought. Pasta with no sauce. And now if my family would be having pasta for dinner, someone would end up going. Good pasta. I don't have a lisp anymore. Sometimes it shines through when I talk too fast or get sloppy with my words, but somehow I fixed it by myself. In nah. first grade, we were learning about letter pronunciation, and when we got to S, the teacher explained oh. that some kids say S with their tongue, when it's actually supposed to be behind your teeth. S. And I was like, oh, so I stopped doing it. Cured. Who knew that if you've got a speech impediment or some lisp. sort of hindrance or obstruction in your life, just stop it. Your tongue does play a role though. Am I crazy? Is that why I do this? Is that why I had a problem with the lisp? I use my tongue, but it's not in front of, it's not in front of my teeth. When I use, do an S, it's, it's still, of course it's behind my teeth, but my tongue is involved in some capacity. Jade, you're giving me more questions than answers with this video, bro. bro. Also, I know I'm calling her bro, stop it. Who knew that if you've got a speech impediment or some sort of hindrance or obstruction in your life, just stop it. Simple. Just stop. You've got cancer. <gasps> no, it's okay. Just stop it. Get some help. When I was learning how to swim, my mom and her friend, who also had Dark. a daughter my age, hired a swim instructor for us. And I don't remember a single thing about it, except that she made us hang off the edge of the pool and just shimmy across the side. But I was terrified of these filters against the side and always oh, refused to go across stuff, them Jayden. because I was scared of being stuck scary in something. Stuff, I don't know how I passed that class because I refused to do the exercise. <laughs> Uh, but at least I knew her eyes were blue. And then at the end of each <laughs> lesson, she'd give us a piece of- Yo, homies, we call that a call back. In stand-up comedy, we call that a call back. And then at the end of each lesson, she'd give us a piece of licorice, like we were dogs. Yo, I didn't licorice, like licorice is the worst candy. <laughs> oh yeah, and also this one time, I almost drowned and died. 
So my parents oh. were having a bunch of their friends over who also had kids for a pool party. There were a handful of pool toys like blow up dolphins and beach balls, but we also had this floating foam mat. I was doofing off doing my own thing, and at one point when I was underwater, the mat drifted over top of me. When oh, I had to go up for no, air, I hit so the bottom scary. of the mat and I was like, uh oh. That's so scary. Time for advanced critical problem solving. So if this mat is over top of me, I can't get up to the surface to breathe. So what do I do? Keep trying. I got it. I'll simply become a child Hercules and lift three six-year-olds yeah. <laughs> from underwater into the air with my twig arms. <laughs> it's because you're panicking. Rather than using one of my four brain cells and swimming two feet to the side away from the mat, I decided to but try and just bench press my way to survival. But, but you never know. If, first of all, that's a military shoulder press, just so you know. But that's what happens. You're panicking because also, if you are under there and then suddenly this thing is above you, clearly it's moving. So if you go another direction, you're now worried, is it going to be where I go up the second time? You have no time to react. It's immediate panic. So I understand why this is scary. However, I'm very curious because I do breathing exercises now and I can hold my breath for three and a half minutes. So I wonder if I could manage to do that without panicking as much. I'm curious. I decided to try and just bench press my way to you survival. Got it, One of the adults realized I was being an idiot and also dying. And instead of being like, well, survival of the fittest, <laughs> he dove in and saved me. So I didn't end up drowning of stupidity. Yay. Thank you, Mr. Chad. And now I'm here, on my own, moved to California, in my own place, not dead at the bottom of a pool, staring Yay. at everyone. Being honest, I love my family so much and they've done so much for me. It takes a lot of effort to raise a person. Just think about how helpless and stupid babies are when they start out. They can't do anything. You can just put a baby on the ground and do nothing. Just leave it alone and it'll just <laughs> Pathetic. I'm so True. thankful and lucky my family's so supportive about everything I've been able to do because I know not a lot of parents are like that. They even helped me sell merch at VidCon. They were Aww. so happy about it too. They came up to me after every day like, Oh my gosh, Jaden, everyone's so wonderful. The people who watch your videos are so sweet. Someone asked me to sign their shirt, so I just wrote Jaden's mom. Aww, that's so wholesome. That's so wholesome, bro. Oh, you're making me miss conventions. You're making me miss conventions. I haven't been to a convention in so long because like the YouTubers that I'm homies with don't really go to conventions. So there's not like a convention that I can go to where I know I have an audience and a group of people to hang with. But I miss it so much. Hey, Jaden, do you, do you want to be friends with me so that I can go to a convention and have a friend? That would be really cool. Let me know. I was really nervous to pursue this career path because it can be a bit unpredictable. Whoa. But the fact that they're so proud and encouraging has helped me do so much more than I ever would have thought I could Aww. if I was alone. So thanks, mom and dad. Aww. Brown Hazel. Yo, how how wholesome is that? So James, <laughs> uh, the odd ones out, he ends his video where he mentions YouTube, talking about how YouTube isn't a stable job and it's scary and it keeps him up at night and he's terrified of what if he lost everything. Whereas Jaden is like, everything's so wonderful. I'm so lucky my mom and dad supported my dreams. Everything's going awesome. It's like, there's a yin and a yang here. So they're similar, but also very different. That was very good. I liked it. I liked it. I will give my full thoughts once we are done with the next one because homies, we flipped a coin and we made a blood oath. We made a promise. Injuries, Injuries and, and being and sick. Injuries. We have to do it, my friends. We have to watch this video. Onward to the injuries and being sick video. What horrors await us? There's only one way to find out. On this exciting episode of Robert IDK. Being sick is the pits. I should know. The pits. Because I'm sick right now. You can probably Aww. hear it in my disgusting nasally voice and I probably shouldn't be recording a YouTube video right now. Aww. But you know what? Life stops for no one and I'm not gonna get left behind. <coughs> Aww. But for real, I was like, I need to get started on the next video, but my voice sounds like I drowned in cheese graters.
whatever. Let's talk about being sick. It's relevant enough. I'm fortunate to have a really good immune system. I never get sick. I don't know. I don't know, Jaden. You're giving us conflicting information here, Jaden. I have the best immune system. I never get sick. Ten seconds before. I'm really sick. I don't know, homie. I don't know, homie. More life. I wanted to say how long it's been since I've been sick, but I really don't want to jinx myself. And I'm gonna knock on wood even though I didn't even say it. Because I'm not trying to jinx the cold gods. I never get sick. <coughs> believe it or not. From elementary school through high school, guess how many days I've missed from being sick? Three. Don't guess. I'm gonna tell you anyway. It's two. And oh. they were back to back, so I was just really dying that one time. I mean, sure, I've gotten sick here and there, and my mom was just like, oh, you're fine. Pack your bag. You're going to school. Yeah, that Missing happens. arm. <laughs> if the lizards can regrow their limbs, so can you. <laughs> that number doesn't tell everything, but I think two is a pretty good score to have over 12 years. Yeah. I'm not like a crazy germaphobe, though. I don't go out of my way to avoid being exposed to sickness or actively try to kill any bacteria that may give me some sniffles. Sometimes I forget to wash my hands. I heard that kids who are more exposed to germs and stuff when they were young were able to more efficiently build immunities to them. So maybe as a kid, I just ate a lot of dirt, but even- <laughs> That's true, that's true. I wash my hands a lot now, and sometimes I feel like I do it a little bit too much. Yeah, when you're a kid, the more bacteria and germs and whatever you're exposed to, the stronger your immune system becomes. I think that's why kids, I mean, for me, I only bathed once a week as a child. That's gross. <laughs> It sure is, Billy. Is that why they do that? Is this some like ancient wisdom that's been passed on for centuries and I'm just now realizing it? Is that why? Whoa. But even though being sick makes you wanna just give up on everything because your eyes are red and your head hurts and you're tired all the time, but you can't sleep because your nose is plugged and you can't breathe and yep. everything is agony and yep. life is pain and nothing is worth it in the end. Yep. There's some pros that can come from it. Like you don't have to share anything. Yay because no one wants to share anything with your disgusting, diseased self. Do you have a pencil I can borrow? I've got a cold. Never mind. Can I have some of your food? I have the flu. Keep it. Do you want to hang out? I'm sick. Oh, no, it's okay. We can just sick of your bull crap. <laughs> best excuse to be a bad member of society and get sympathy for it. Any other time if you were to sleep in till 12 and then stay in bed all day on the computer, people would just think you're really lazy and have no motivation. But if you just say, oh, I was sick, all of a sudden, oh, you poor thing, get better soon. Yeah. Can I get anything? Yep. Oh, you're such a trooper. Yep. It's great. So, okay, so that's something I battled with recently because I recently in the last couple months came down with a really, really bad illness. It's not like a cold or anything like that. I talked about it briefly in this video right here because I took a few weeks off of YouTube before returning and posting that video. I very recently in the last couple months developed a really, really serious illness that causes me to be in extreme pain in my stomach and groin area just for weeks at a time, like weeks. I'm not talking like hours at a time or like a little bit every day. No, just constant pain for weeks. And it's something that I might have to deal with on and off for the rest of my life. But during that time, it's like people will let you just do nothing. I still don't really allow myself to not do anything. I really hate not doing anything, but it is really interesting how people treat others when they're ill, which it, it's a good thing, of course. The important thing is to not let your illness be an excuse for the rest of your life. Because if you allow stuff like that to create excuses, Uses and oh, I don't need to ever do any work ever because I'm sick. Then you're only really cheating yourself in the end. Also, you have the power to claim anything you touch. <laughs> Oh, jeez. You're joking. You're joking. You're, you're joking Each with that own, one. But I also use being sick as an excuse to not talk to anyone because I'm a pathetic shy blob. Good job, immune system. You have failed me. Once as a kid, my brother got pink eye and my family pretty much barricaded him in his room and didn't let him touch anything. It's funny how as soon as someone gets sick, everyone is empathetic towards them, but also kind of treats them like an unpredictable rabid animal. All right, Fair. just stay right there. Don't go anywhere. Fair. Pe soup. People don't ah, want to get stay sick. Stay over there. I'll push the ball to you with this stick. <laughs> Feel better soon. I think the worst <laughs> thing I had growing up was a few migraines here and there. The first time I had a migraine was in sixth grade. I was sitting in class and all of a sudden my eyes started not working. Whoa. Like I would look in one direction and I couldn't see anything in my peripheral vision. It was all gray and foggy. And at first I was like, whoa, this is weird. So this is what blind people see. And I was kind of <laughs> fascinated by it. Then all of a sudden it felt like my brain exploded. 
I got to go home early. But I don't count that as a sick day because I was at school for the majority of it. Okay, fine. Listen, Jaden, anyone who actually knows how many sick days they had over 12 years, you already won, okay? You already won the sick day debate, okay? I'm not gonna hassle you over the half day that you missed. I mean, I probably only missed like five days from being sick unless it was like chicken pox, then I got a few days. But in terms of the common cold, yeah, no, my parents made me go through it. They totally made me go through it. He got put down by the cold. The dude was ready to retire because of the cold. Man, all you need is some vitamin C. So imagine, think about that. He was ready to retire from the cold. But even then, I still don't know the exact number of sick days I had in my entire life. The fact that Jaden knows that says a lot. <laughs> if you've never had a migraine, take a moment to just appreciate that because they're one of the worst things ever. I mean, there's worse but they were up there. I haven't had any really bad injuries either. The only serious injury I've had was when I was nine. I'm saying serious because I had to go to the ER, but it's really not that bad. For my birthday one year, my parents got me Heelys. Do you remember those? The shoes with the wheel in them? I didn't specifically ask for them, but after a few months, I decided to start trying them out. I'd roll around in the house, up and down the halls, and it was Crazy. pretty fun. Then one time I decided to take them out on the streets. Our neighborhood was on take a slant, the streets, so there was Jane. a bit of a steep angle to the cold sack and I was like this is a good idea <laughs> foreshadowing it very wasn't I started going down the road and picking up speed oh, no. and like two-thirds of the way fast, down Jayden, the tiniest little pebble was like hey there friend and clogged the wheel and <laughs> threw me forward Jayden, I hit my head no. on the road and opened dude pebbles as soon as you introduce wheels to your life and I ain't talking about cars I ain't talking about cars and I ain't talking about bikes either the moment that you introduce small wheels into your life like skateboarding or using heelys pebbles become the scariest thing you can possibly see. Pebbles become your worst enemy. The amount of damage you can do to yourself while skateboarding because of a pebble is unprecedented. Pebbles are terrifying. Then that's all it takes to send Jaden to the ER. I hit my head on the road and opened a huge gash in my chin. My mom was outside talking to our neighbor so she saw the whole thing and was like, Okay, well, I'll talk to you later, Wendy. We're gonna waltz on over to the hospital now. <laughs> My adrenaline was still pumping super hard, so I didn't feel a thing, and I was like, no, mom, I'm fine. It's not that bad, oh, I'm okay. No. But she was like, no, we're going to the hospital. Jeez. I had to hold a towel over my chin to keep from bleeding all over the car. She didn't let me see the damage at the time, but I asked her about it a bit ago, and she said she didn't want me to see the cut because even she was freaked out about it. This description isn't for the squeamish, but she described it as like another mouth I gashed out of my head. Hey friend, sorry about all this. Oh no. Yeah, in order to bleed like that for that long, you have to get a real cut. And to have a cut in this area that bleeds for that long, it has to be a serious cut because the parts of your face that bleed like crazy when they get cut are this area. Typically, if you get cut here, it's not gonna bleed nearly to the extent of something around here or even like the side of the head. So yeah, that must have been crazy. Okay, yeah, it's probably for the best you didn't let me see that. So I went to the hospital and ended up getting three stitches in my chin. When I was waiting for the doctor, a doctor from another room walked in to get some water and was like, what are you in for? She hit her chin on the road. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I've been there before. And he showed us a scar in his chin. And then another doctor cool. overheard from the other room and was like, Yep, same story. And he had a scar on his chin. It's all Healy wearing doctors. Did you go to the Healy hospital? Did you go to the Healstable, Jaden? It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. There has to be an explanation. And he had a scar on his chin. So that was a nice human bonding experience. Yay. I didn't know so many doctors had Healy's. When I went to school <laughs> the next day, I had same a bandage on my stitches and all of my two friends were like, whoa, what happened? I hit my chin on the road. Whoa! <laughs> and I felt really cool, and it made me want to so like break cool. my arm or something to be even cooler. I did get a hockey stick to the eye in 12th grade that swelled my eye shut for a month. And I did get treated like I was cool, even though I just suffered a serious injury. Like, it wasn't good. It wasn't because I was tough that I got that. It just, I got a hockey stick to the eye. And I've mentioned this before. I still have the scar here, but in this lighting and this camera, you probably won't be able to see it. But I do have a scar. 
scar right here still. That was the most I've ever bled. Because like I said, this area, when you get cut around here, it bleeds like crazy. So that was the most for me that I had ever seen. And my gym teacher said that was the most she had ever seen as well. So that's how you know it's a lot. And when I got hit, I just crumbled to the ground and my eyes were closed as I was falling. But when I opened my eyes, all that I could do was I opened one eye and then just saw blood pouring out of this eye. And so I thought I had lost that eye. I thought like, there goes seeing in my right eye for the rest of my life. That's what I thought had happened. It was it was like one of the scariest moments of my life. I hated it. But I am so, so lucky that I made a full recovery. Okay, homies, we have time for one more quick one. Because these videos are a little bit shorter than the odd ones out, because the outro is like a minute and a half long. I didn't really expect that. So we are going to hit one more really quick classic with 31 milli views on the track. We got crazy substitute teachers. This video must be pretty fire if a video about substitute teachers Teachers can get that many views. So people, let's hit it. Three, two, one. Yo, what's up, homesicles? I'm gonna talk about substitute teachers. Homesicles, homesicles. How old is this one? How old is this one? All right, this is one of her older videos. Jaden, homesicles, I'm gonna forgive you this one time, but please do not say that again. Yo, what's up, homesicles? I'm gonna talk about substitute teachers. I wanna say for the most part, we all like having subs. You like walk into the classroom expecting it to be a normal day and you glance over at the teacher and boom, it's a sub. Yay, fun. Yes, don't have to try today. Most subs are pretty cool. They don't really care too much either and everyone just ends up having a nice easy break day. Yeah, they have this kinda. attitude like, okay, so I'm just gonna pop in a movie or something, do whatever you want. I'm just here to make sure you don't all go Miley Cyrus wild and put some kids eye out with the ruler. But Okay, that is kind of the vibe though. As a kid, I was such a good kid that I still like took it just as seriously, but realistically, like when you have a substitute teacher, it's like, it's time to chill. Consequences are mostly out the window. I'm not condoning any of this. To any of you who are still in school, I'm not condoning what I'm about to say. But to a substitute, you can be an obnoxious jerk and be disruptive and you're not gonna see that sub again. It's not gonna affect how your normal teacher sees you because how your normal teacher sees you is going to affect your marks and your grades. So you have to care about behaving in front of your normal teacher, but a sub? Who cares? But sometimes they don't care too much and it gets kind of weird. Like once I had a math sub where we were just doing a worksheet or something and this girl behind me was eating carrots, but all of a sudden okay. she started choking on one of her carrots and was like gasping and gagging and stuff and everyone turned around and was mortified. What? What do we do? We all what? looked over at the sub for help and guidance or something because of all people, he should have a plan. And he was just looking at her, not doing anything. <laughs> I'm sure if the girl could have spoke at that time, she would have said, Freaking, I'm choking on a carrot here. What are you looking at? Do something, you buffoon. Ah! You're the adult. You gotta do it. Yeah, no, true. It's like when a sub comes in and they're gonna like watch a movie or something, it's like they did not plan on getting paid to save your life that day. It's like, oh, I just, I don't want any of this. Substitute teachers don't want drama. They want to get in get the bag and get out of there. And listen, that's no disrespect to substitute teachers. There are a lot of very passionate, very awesome substitute teachers. But when you get those substitute teachers who don't care, they're there to pick up a quick bag and get out. Go home and play God of War 2 on PlayStation. Too. So for a small period of time, everyone was just helplessly looking at this poor girl choking on a carrot. No one knew what to do! Finally, no one, one guy got up and did the choking Heimlich procedure <laughs> they teach us. It was so uh. legit! He even did the are you choking question like they say you have to. If you haven't heard of the technique, <gasps> or for some reason they changed it, the steps are Approach the person and ask, are you choking? Do not proceed if they are not choking. <laughs> it actually says that. <laughs> Get behind the person and wrap your arms around their waist. Be ready to support them if they faint. Take your fist and place the thumb side against their belly, just above their belly button. Grab the fist with the other hand and thrust into the belly. And the final step is, repeat thrusts until the object pops out or until the person faints. Jeez. So the girl didn't faint. He actually got the carrot out of her throat and everyone was relieved. Yo, have any of you guys ever seen that happen? I have never seen someone choke like that in person. I've watched people choke and then like get past it, but I've never seen a, a choke where someone had to get the Heimlich done. That's some scary stuff. Have you ever seen that? Let me know in the comments, honestly. And guys, if you're watching this far into the video and you haven't booped the like button, 
take take a real quick break, take it out of full screen really quick and just do me a quick favor. Boop that like button. It helps me out a little bit. And if you're watching this video while you're here, if you're watching this video and you aren't subscribed to the channel, well, now's the perfect time. I'm giving you a moment. Hit the subscribe button and make sure you're back next time we do this. He actually got the carrot out of her throat and everyone was relieved. And Yay. after all that hullabaloo, we all kind of looked over to see what the sub had to say about the situation. Whoa, and that was interesting. Nothing. He just watched the situation with a blank slate look on his face. Like, what the heck? What are you? I've never seen less of a reaction from such a big situation from anyone in my entire life. He should make a reaction channel, come to think of it. He'd blend in with most of the people on YouTube doing it already. Anyway. <laughs> Shots fired. Shots fired at my whole community, Jaden. No, I'm just kidding. I don't claim any of those people who do reaction videos who don't say anything or sh express themselves. I, in fact, I take pride in being a reaction channel who actually tries to give it 110% every time. I can't film a video if I don't have enough energy. I can't film a video if I'm not in a good mood. I want to make sure I come in and crush it every single time because there's a lot of really bad reaction channels. And Jaden, honestly, I do not take offense to Jaden saying this because it's true, but I take pride in knowing that I'm an exception. Anyway, enough with Mr. Blank Slate. I remember when I was in high school, we had kind of a main group of substitutes that were common to have when a teacher called in sick or something. And there was this one old man guy that everyone knew and absolutely hated. And before Aww. I say something like, oh, Jaden, that's kind of rude to say. No. In our defense, it's fair. he hated us too. Whenever a person walked in and saw him sitting behind the teacher's desk, the immediate thought would be, oh no. Oh, f crap. It's going to be a rough day today. <laughs> no one had to say it, but we were all thinking it. Okay, Jaden, so what was he like? Oh, stand up so you can sit down because I'm, I'm getting started. Take the strictest person you know and throw them out the window because this guy is now that person. I think Whoa. he saw himself as a military instructor leading juvenile delinquents because he wanted every child to be behaving perfectly, to a T, no funny business. No funny business. Everyone can relate to this. Everyone has had like a, a substitute teacher who's really old and been in the game for a really long time. And it's just like they hate children. They hate children, but they're a teacher. Everyone knows a substitute teacher like that. And if you don't know a substitute teacher like that, you were homeschooled. And yeah, that's not gonna happen in a high school. So there's problem one. He would start every class with the same lecture. All right, sit down and zip up because we're taking attendance. If I hear any talking, you're being written up. I don't tolerate jokesters in my classroom. It, it, that's not James, right? That's not James. Who is that? Who is that? Lixian. Oh, Lixian. Cool. All right. That didn't really sound like an old person. Not not quite enough gravel, but it's it was a, it's nice to have a different voice. All right, sit down and zip up because we're taking attendance. If I hear any talking, you're being written up. I don't tolerate jokesters in my classroom. Yeah. I'm going to call out your last name, followed by your first name. And if I don't hear you say present, then you're being marked absent. You okay. should be paying attention because you only have one chance. And I'm not calling names twice. If I pronounce your name wrong, correct me. All right, here we go. He says that exact paragraph every time he starts a class, and I know it because I've had him enough times to have it power washed into my head. I kind of want to believe he has it written down and framed somewhere in his house so he can proudly look at it before he goes to bed every night. And he actually gets mad if you don't correct him if he says your name wrong. Wow. I know from experience. I don't care when people pronounce my Jiden? name wrong. It happens all the time. I've gotten used to it. So I thought I wouldn't make a big deal out of it. Animations... Jaden. <laughs> okay, bud. Okay, bud. Animations. Jaden. IDK Robert. That's one thing that's nice about having a name as just like old as Robert is like ain't nobody pronouncing Robert wrong ever. Robert is a name that's been around for so long. Everyone knows how to pronounce it to the point where they get bored of it. They start calling you Robert or Bobbert or Roberto. Like stuff like like that. That is an advantage. But honestly, I think Robert's one of the dopest names ever because Robert can become so many things. Robert, Rob, Robbie, Bob, Bobby, Bo. You can do whatever you want with my name. I prefer Robert and Bo. Thank you. Animations. Animations. Here. Did I say that correctly? 
It's close enough. Correct me next Correct time! Me. It, sorry? <laughs> he reminds me of if, like, Oscar the Grouch had a pet lemon, but the lemon was expired by two months and he keeps forgetting to throw it away. Like, oh crap, the lemon. Ah, I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> and he doesn't do it tomorrow. So, I'll call him Mr. Yet to be thrown out lemon. Just for simplicity. I truly simplicity. don't know why Mr. Yet to be thrown out Lemon worked as a substitute teacher because you could just see the child hatred in his eyes. Somehow he made everyone in the class feel uncomfortable just by existing. Yeah, no so children. let me tell you a story about Mr. Yet to be thrown out Lemon. We had him in a biology class once wow. and we were just gonna work on a paper he had to pass out. All right, we're gonna be doing a worksheet today. If I hear any talking, you're being written up. This is an wow. individual worksheet, so there's absolutely no reason no to talk to talk. anyone at all during this hour. Oh, that is pain, bro. Mr. Yet to be thrown out lemon. Now I'm starting to understand how you got your name, Mr. Yet to be thrown out lemon. Now I'm getting it. That is the worst. When there's a teacher or a sub who's like, hey, do this work, no talking at all. Like, bro, are you kidding me? Me personally, there are few worse ways to torture me than to tell me I can't talk. There are few worse fates that I can be subjected to than I can't talk. It's impossible. <laughs> Everyone come up to the front of the room right now and grab a paper. Um, uh, Mrs. Graves does it, out, so each person at a table has a number, and she calls out a random number, and that person just gets up and gets the paper for the rest of the table, so it's easier to- I will not True. have slaves in my classroom! What did he just say? <laughs> <laughs> this man just compared picking up papers for other classmates to slavery. <laughs> slavery! Good God, I- d uh. You know who would do something like that? A yet to be thrown out lemon. <gasps> That's how we got the name! So we did it his way. The 34 of us all got up at the same time and shuffled to the front of the room, awkwardly squishing together to grab a paper from the one pile he made for us. You are a fruitcake. He did a lot of other weird over-the-top things, but this was by far the best thing I've ever witnessed from him. Oh, Mr. Yet to be thrown out lemon. You're a real piece of work. No talking. Oh, got him. Got him. No talking. I am Mr. Lemon, and I am yet to be thrown out. I hope she made merch about Mr. Yet to be thrown out Lemon. You can't create a meme that iconic and not make a shirt out of it. And speaking of merch, you have about one week left to get your IDK hat if you don't have one. RobertIDK.net. I'm only doing these for another week or so. This is a special drop, homies. Get yours while you can. Link is in the description, or just type RobertIDK.net in your browser, guys. It's not that hard. Jaden Animations. I give you a J plus. That was really good. There were some moments that really surprised me. Like, there are some moments that made me laugh super hard that I wasn't expecting. You can kind of tell that the videos that we're watching, her animation isn't quite as developed as James's, but I'm sure by now she's making really, really awesome stuff. And it doesn't even matter because her storytelling is so good that she could be doing stick figures and it's still good. So Jaden Animations, dope stuff. And people, here is Jaden's channel if you wanna check her out. She's the one who made these animations. She did all the hard work. I just said the silly things. Make sure you check her out. Or here's the last video we did where we reacted to the odd ones out. It was so much fun. I love these videos so much. Check it out if you haven't seen it. Or here is a video that YouTube thinks you will like specifically. Are they right? You let me know. I love y'all. Thank you for watching my stuff. I appreciate you. Peace.